Are you kidding me? So that was uh, Frank the UPS guy. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Morris Motors. Good morning. It's the weekend and uh, my buddy uh, Robert Nighthawk over in Maryland saw my video where I picked up this uh, snapper defatcher attachment and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but he says he wants it. So uh, his wife's cousin who lives here in Long Island is driving down to Maryland this weekend or next week to uh, go visit them. So I'm gonna go and drop this off at his cousin's house so that Robert could have it. Uh, in addition, I'm gonna stop by the church now and show um, that Toro recycler that I just fixed the other day. You know, the head scratcher two <laughs> mower. Anyway, somebody wants to buy it. Um, I listed it for 165. I'll take as much as 125. Let's see what happens. So I met a nice lady, um, was telling her all the functions of the machine and it uh, performed perfectly after <laughs> two episodes of trying to fix that. Um, I guess what it was, was the, what was it? It was the throttle, I guess, right? Uh, anyway, so I sold it, ran perfectly, ran beautiful. Uh, I had it listed for 165, she gave me 180 I give her 15 back so she didn't even bargain $165 it's already a great day now I'm on my way to go drop off that dethatcher I thought I'd stop by field and stream and see what's going on so it's the next day I actually spent Father's Day yesterday just sitting at home lying on the couch <laughs> watching the IndyCar race then the NASCAR race and then some and like Moneyball like the 15th time you know what I mean uh, so I didn't do anything yesterday, but today I woke up getting ready to do some wrenching. It's a cloudy sky today and it might rain. And I found this on my lawn. It was kind of windy last night, I guess. And I've always had, you know, birds nests up here and all. Uh, anyhow, I was just going to use my hands and just grab it. I mean, it's a decent size, you know what I mean? Um, I can see that there's a lot of feathers in here, so I think there might be. I mean, maybe there's a bird in there. Uh, I've had little birds fly, uh, fall down here before and die. Hope there's no birds in there. So there wasn't any birds in there, thank goodness. But I feel bad that now those birds don't have a place to live. I guess they'll build another nest, you know? Uh, I don't know, call me a pussy, whatever you want, it's okay. But I've, since I got my dog a couple of years ago, three years ago, I've been I've always been kind of an animal lover, you know? So as you guys know, I, I like guns. So um, I have my other channel, Mowers, Blowers, and Guns. Make sure you subscribe, help me out. I'm at 700 something subscribers. Could sure use a thousand, you know what I mean? So at least that could be monetized. So if you guys got nothing to do, please click the link in the description of every video, right? Where it shows uh, my second channel. If you can't find it, it's on YouTube. Um, mowers, blowers, and guns. Help me subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Anyway, so uh, my friend asked me, hey, one day I'll take you to uh, go duck hunting. And I'm like, duck hunting? Defenseless ducks? You're going to go shoot their head off for no reason whatsoever? And so, I mean, look, when I was like 14 or 4, 13 or something like that, I had a BB gun, a Crossman pump, right? And one day, I shot this squirrel. I don't think I killed him. But I felt bad about it for like a month. I just don't think I can go and shoot an animal for no reason at all. 
Now, unless the squirrel had a gun shooting at me, that's a different story, you know what I mean? But I don't think they make guns that small. So uh, when he asked me to go duck hunting, I go, I, I can't go turkey hunting, duck hunting, deer hunting. I can't, I just don't think I can do it. You know what I mean? It's like uh, my cousin Vinny, where Marissa Tomei is saying, oh, you got a little baby deer that's drinking water from a brook. And then bam, some asshole hunter shoots your head off with a shotgun. I mean, what the fuck, you know? Mailbag. I don't get as many mailbags as I used to get, you know what I mean? Yeah, for some of you new uh, people that are clicking this channel to watch, you're like, Henry, hurry up, get to the fix. I'm like, this is my channel where I show you what I do every day, okay? If you don't want to watch it, skip to the fix. But I want to tell you about what's going on. Some of you guys might be interested. Anyway. So like about a week ago, right, I had that Poulon, um, Husqvarna, Craftsman, whatever, the big uh, self-propelled front, self-propelled mower. And uh, it had that crazy, super secret uh, CIA type Kohler uh, spark plug. Um, it's um, 14-132-11S. <laughs> the only reason why I remember that model number is because I was searching up and down the internet. I thought I had every spark plug in the history of spark plugs, you know? Apparently that was one spark plug that I was missing and I didn't have any spares. Nor did I even know that that size existed. I mean, I guess deep down inside I did because I have worked on it before with the strange spark plug. Anyway, so uh, I took the spark plug from that uh, Toro Recycler, which you guys saw I just sold, right? That the spark plug went with it, of course. So now my Poulon doesn't have a spark plug, right? Came today. This is the super secret. <laughs> it's an original Kohler from Kohler Engines. Like I said, it's a 14-132-11S. That's this one right here. So I'm going to install this brand new top secret... <laughs> obscure rare spark plug look i've done several hundred lawnmowers in my life you know what i mean and if i recently just figured out <laughs> that that engine the kohler xt 675 engine and listen they have kohler 675 engines that use the regular one this is one that uses only this one you know what i mean weird $6.57 plus tax on eBay, so seven something, seven twelve, seven fifteen. That's what I paid for a spark plug. <laughs> it, I will admit this is the first time I've paid for a spark plug. Anyway, I'm gonna put this in the pool on and see if it works. So here's that pool on Kohler XT675, 149cc engine. It's a pretty good engine. It has that carburetor where you have to put the sandwich together you know the gasket the carburetor the spacer and another gasket onto it kind of like a Honda like a sandwich you put it on this is not as bad as a Honda those Honda ones will drive you absolutely nuts if you want to put it together uh, anyway so I remember now I definitely had these before had this same problem before because you know why because I couldn't find a spark plug socket that would fit this <laughs> 14 132 11 s spark plug. I remember that I have to go and buy the spark plug socket. It's an 11 16 This spark plug, the super secret one, only takes an 11 16 spark plug socket. So I had to especially go buy this. And now I had to especially go buy this just to get this working. Can you believe that? Anyway, we're gonna put this spark plug in. It should fit. And as you know, I just fixed that thing. It's a, uh, both of these were part of the four uh, lawnmower load that I got from Mike over at Mike's Lawn Service Babylon. I also have another one from a new subscriber named Alan, who's also a gun lover. Uh, he gave me one of his uh, Craftsman green things. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm not really looking forward to fixing that and the remaining mower that I have in the backyard, push mower I mean, which is a uh, Toro Recycler with a Tecumseh engine on it. I'm just putting it off, man, because I know I'm going to spend a lot of time on both of those because both cables are done -ski! 
I need to calm down. No screaming. Okay. I'm 52 years old. My blood pressure could be getting high. <laughs> I haven't been to the doctor in like two or three years because of COVID. You know what I mean? Not to mention the fact that going to the doctor is not something you really want to do anyway. You know? Here we go. We're finished with this mower now. It's got its own spark plug. It's been sitting in my garage for about a week waiting for the spark plug. I forget what I did to this to get it working. Let's see. Dum dum dum. Say what you want about the Kohler engines. I really like them. I think they sound great. They sound powerful too. Easy to pull start. This is a nice mower. I always like the big ones. The Husqvarna Craftsman slash Poulon kinds. I remember now what we did with it. Uh, we put this back on and we replaced that wheel. There might've been something else with the, oh yeah, that's right, no spark plug, duh. So this was a pretty easy fix. I didn't have to do anything with the cables. This one, as you guys remember, this mows great. Uh, I don't know, some MTD push mowers, they mow really well. Anyway, this has, been, this has been sitting in my garage for three days. Let's just see if it starts, you know? Dum -dum -dum. Honestly, it's a pretty good mower. So, what's next? What do I have left that needs fixing? Trust me, I got plenty of stuff to do, okay? Just don't know if I feel like doing it is all. I'm at that point, you know, where you just have to feel like doing it. I'm not ready to do a tractor yet, although this just needs a new engine. I do kind of want to get this out of the way so it's not just sitting here if the engine's done ski I could use the frame to you know it's like an engine holder you know what I mean you could put spare engines on it and roll it around as you can see the gun the wand has been cut off right which leads me to believe that you can't remove it easily <laughs> because it's probably stuck um, pump is probably bad on this power washer uh, you do need a gas cap because I stole it for uh, a, a lawnmower project, right? This is the auto choke type, right? It is a quantum engine, which means that even if this engine was Dunsky, right? The gas tank would sell for $25 or $30, right? Carburetor, all the parts and stuff would, would be... You could use them, you know, for future applications, or you can sell them on eBay. I could use the engine stand, quote unquote. Now I do have a couple of guns, wands, but they um, they don't really look like this. They're the longer kinds, you know what I mean? This part here, it's like this long, and those don't fit on certain other ones. This is the short kind, and as you can see, that's the reason why they cut it, because they couldn't get it off, but I'm sure I can get it off. Let's go find a wand uh, and see if this engine runs because then I can get rid of this section right here out of my yard. You know what I mean? One at a time, one thing at a time. The other thing I was talking about, the uh, Craftsman mower from Allen. I don't really want to work on this because I know I might have to buy a cable. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it, it's just this part here. This part is there so that it, it won't hold here to engage it enough to pull there, you know? Uh, I believe the self-propulsion works is what he told me. Usually when you want this to work, you pull this down, the bail handle, and then you engage the self-propulsion and it clicks, stays in place, self-propulsion's moving. Then when you lift up the handle halfway, it disengages like that, see? 
So I think that this works. I think the self propulsion would work. Um, as you can see, the tires, the wheels are pretty good, even the fronts, and it is self propelled, right? Like I said, we just need a bail handle brake cable. And of course, we need to fix the recoil starter rope. So to me, I think that's all that's wrong with this is just the cable, which isn't too bad. Uh, the bag is to be, uh, is uh, <laughs> something to be desired. It is a little damaged, but believe it or not, I actually have another bag like this, I think, that would fit. Then you have my uh, Toro Recycler, the older kind with the Tecumseh engine on it, while the red bulb, which is usually stiff and rigid, is pushable, and I think it might work, right? I just don't like Tecumseh engines because the carburetors are infamous for leaking, uh, as well as sometimes difficult to start. As you can see, the front has been jigged with the height adjusters. There's a reason why there's a bungee cord holding them two together like that. Um, front wheels are Dunsky. Don't even know if the gears work. Don't know if the self-propulsion works. As you can tell from you experts of Toros, you don't even have to be an expert. You can tell that these wheels are not Toro wheels. These are replacements, you know? So this is, this is gonna need a lot to, to get it going, you know? Of course, I could be surprised, you know, sometimes I am, but uh, that's it. This and this are the only two um, mowers that I have left to fix. Of course, we have that one that needs an engine, right? And I'll show you what else I have in my um, outstanding list of uh, to-do episodes. I still haven't sold my Scots by John Deere. You guys saw the eight episode uh, series on this. Reason why is because I listed this for 750. I know, I know, it's only a 12.5 horsepower. And um, 750 is a lot for it, you know? But I figured somebody would buy it at least and offer me 550, which they did. I should have taken it, but I didn't. Um, but you know what, I'm not in any hurry. I use it to mow my lawn, you know? This, uh, I'm planning on taking the roof off. And this Rodimus Prime utility rack off and paint it white and put the rack and the roof on my blue bayou and then sell these two now this has a um, briggs vanguard vertical 18 horsepower engine v-twin awesome engine the only reason i'm keeping this is because of the engine i don't have a deck for it so it's useless it's a hauler it's a golf cart for goodness sakes you know but uh, I might steal the roof, like I said, and make my uh, Blue Bayou good. This is my, um, another carcass of crap I got from uh, Nick from Bellport. This needs an engine. I have an engine for it. And of course, you also know I have that new Toro uh, lawn tractor uh, made by MTD. Comes with the deck, it's complete. It has transmission belt issues is what is the reason why he gave it to me for free. And, um, that needs a Kohler 19 or 20 engine, which I have, Kohler Courage. So I have engines for all three of the tractor projects. I just don't want to get around to it because as you guys know, with tractor projects, it takes a long time. Oh, let's find that um, gun. So I'm over here, I have um, actually three guns. Let's see if any of these guns have the um, attachment that I need. It's the short one inch one, like this one here. But that looks really worn and rusty. But it looks like this is the gun that I could use. Okay, the other one has a hose that looks like this. It's like a two inch one. These, in my experience, do not fit the ones that have the one inch ones, you know, that stop there. So that's the two kinds that I have. I'm glad I have both kinds, but I guess we'll take this one and just try it. Okay, so we're here in front of my garage. As you can see, this is very rusted. I would probably have to kind of grind this a little bit if I have problems getting it on. But as you can see, this is the same uh, type of um, attachment knob onto this one. Uh, while this one seems like it won't come off, I believe it's just stuck, you know what I mean?
Hello. Here we go. Here it comes. Come on, man. There we go. It was just rusted in there, and sometimes it's hard to get off. I'm going to try to fit this on, see if it fits. Oh. It's too tight. Yep, it's too big. That's what she said. I got the second gun out, the one that has the two inch one. And if you look at the diameter of the inner valve input, it's the same. Uh, this O-ring is a little fatter because it's in better shape. This one's all worn, you know, on the O-ring. But it doesn't appear that this black part here, the knob, it doesn't go in enough to grab the um, threads. Whereas this is the same, see? So I don't know how it connects on there. I'm gonna have to try to like grab this and then grab this like that and then bang over here to try to get it onto the thread so it'll even go on there. It won't go on there. See, you can turn it all you want. Push all you want. It's just not grabbing the threads, you know? So I'm gonna have to tool with this a little bit. I did exactly what I just said I was gonna do. I gripped it like this and I took a hammer and I banged that in. Banged it enough so that the first part of this knob now turns on the threads. And that's it though. I mean, that's on there, I guess. All right, so look, let's see if we can... I wonder what that's from. Maybe there. This is hinky. The choke and the run lever, usually it clicks, you know? Zzz, 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 clicks, click, 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 click. This one doesn't. It feels hinky. When I say hinky, it means that it just doesn't feel right. Suspicious. It's a cop term. Hinky. Anyway, that's run, uh, turtle, stop, do run, choke. I don't know if it has, I don't think it has gas in it. It has this makeshift gas cap on here. Gonna have to add some gas in here. Or you know what, maybe we should just take the air cleaner cover off. Yes, it's, it's bone dry. Let's take the air cleaner cover off and spray some go-go uh, juice in there. So today's video guys is just an update on what has to be done, my to-do list. And I've given you a good update on that for sure open up the choke just want to see if this engine runs to get this off my to-do list you know whether I use just the stand whether I keep the engine for a future application because it's a power washer uh, crankshaft sometimes it's tapered at the end so you can't attach a uh, blade adapter to it if you wanted to use this for let's say a lawnmower you know if you had a bad lawnmower engine you put the power washer engine onto the lawnmower it may be difficult to get the adapter onto the crankshaft because it's tapered and or the crankshaft is too short or too long, you know? Most, most of the times it's too short, which means you need to get the bigger, longer blade adapter for it to work for a lawnmower. I've done it before. People said you can't do it, but I've done it before in my previous uh, videos. Anyway, so let's, uh, it's on choke. We got some go-go juice in here. It's got no gas. Let's just see if it turns over, okay? Wow, cool. Turns over on first pull. Let's put some gas in it and see if it runs. I'm just putting some in here, enough to get it started, and just to see if it runs on its own. That's plenty. I'm gonna try to put this gas cap back on here again. So we don't have a good sign here. There's massive leakage going on here with the carburetor once you put the gas in. 
and I think it's actually leaking. Could be from the fuel line because it's cracked. Let's just see if it starts. Yes, I know, you're not supposed to run power washers dry. You always have to connect um, water to it, otherwise it'll burn the pump off. But remember, we think that this pump is Dunsky anyway, and we've got, we've got a fuel leak somewhere. I'd like to fix the fuel leak because it appears that this engine runs. Runs well too, because it pulled on the first start both times. So let's address the fuel leak, see if it's coming from the fuel line or the carburetor itself. I want to say that the uh, fuel leak is coming from the fuel line, which is much easier. Because then you don't have bowl gasket problems on the carburetor because... So if you take a look here, now I'll get you closer, you see there, you touch the bowl of the carburetor and it is a little wet, but it's not like the reason why it's wet. Like if I just touch underneath where the bolt is, my finger is not wet. I'm touching the outskirts of the bowl and it's a little wet, but it's, I think it's just coming from this line here, you know? I think the fuel line is just bad because if it was leaking from the carburetor, you'd see more fuel dropping here, not there. So I think we just need to replace this fuel line. That's good. So I put the uh, washer on its side, the part where the dipstick is, so that when you put it on its side, the oil doesn't drip into your carburetor and contaminate the fuel and dirty up your carburetor. Also, because this side is the gas um, tank fill area, the fuel that I put in there is gonna be on this side and it won't leak. As you can see from this fuel line, it's cracked all the way through, all around. I have this other one, it's used, it's in, it's in good condition, you know? So I'm just gonna remove this one and cut this one to size and have this seemingly good fuel line to replace that so we don't have a leak. At least let's put, the, put it on and see if there's a leak. Well, okie dokie, as you can see, it's not leaking anymore. Got a new fuel line there and it's not leaking. So it wasn't the carburetor, it was just the fuel line. Let's take it to the backyard and connect it to water. Okay, I'm in my backyard now. I've got one of these flexa hoses, you know, snake hoses, where it retracts into a ball when you're done and then stretches out when you're uh, starting. Don't get the orange plastic fittings because they suck. Uh, you got to get the brass ones, they're $10 more. I think this 50 yard, uh, 50 foot line cost me $29.99. Anyway, I don't know why it's still coming out. I haven't turned the water on. What do you guys think? Do you think the pump will work? I say it won't work. As a matter of fact, it leaks already right here, see? It's just gonna go nuts, you know? It's definitely not gonna work. I'm gonna turn the water on now, real time. Here we go. On, choke. Off choke. Oh, the cow. Ha, ha, ha. 
So as you can see, this pump is done still, which is the reason why they threw it away. It leaks everywhere. It leaks here, it leaks there, and it's coming out of that area there. Yes, you could just take that apart and change the gaskets maybe, but uh, I don't mess with this stuff. I just don't. I don't really like power washers because I think it's too much trouble. Even the electric ones, they're too much trouble too. Always got to hook up water to it. This, these issues here, I just don't want to mess with it, you know? So, uh, I'm going to remove this engine and keep it for some other thing. Um, and use this stand as an engine stand. Sorry, I didn't realize it was so um, wet. There is a better look at what's going on without getting wet. Can you believe it? Somebody asked me about a snowblower. So I have to get the snowblower out of here. Who the hell's thinking about a snowblower this time of year? Huh? Who wants to think about a snowblower? This thing right here. From what I remember, this starts up just fine. I have it listed for 275. At this point in my life, I'd like to just get rid of it for... I'll give it away for free. What are you, crazy? Of course I'm not going to give it away for free. It has some gas in it. And it doesn't feel like it's priming. And I forget if this is the choke or not. I forget. I think it's the right to choke. Let's see. Was surging for a little bit but then let it run for a while and it smooths out. Not bad. So I know it runs, took it out. I'm just going to put it over here because if the guy flakes on me, I don't have to bring it all the way out and load it and all that other jazz. So that's it. Just a inventory update on my to-do list today. Uh, we did get that uh, power washer out of the way. We know that the engine runs just fine. It's an auto choke. You could probably only use it for another power washer. It's probably worth more in parts than the engine itself, right? But if I'm ever in a bind in the future where I have a nice deck and a blown engine and I don't have any engines, I'll put that on there. And the fun of it is to try to adapt it to make it work on the lawnmower. Uh, the auto choke feature is very good. Runs very well, starts on the first pull. Um, I could just list it for 20 bucks as is, you know what I mean? But honestly, like I said, the gas tank itself is worth 25 bucks. So it wouldn't be worth it to me to sell it locally. If I didn't have any time, maybe, I got, that's all I got. I got plenty of time. <laughs> At least uh, maybe 25 years worth before I go piffed, you know. I uh, did forget to put this back on, which I'll go and do now. But uh, getting that snowblower out of storage, maybe I'll sell it. It would be a miracle if I did, you know. <laughs> Honestly, if the guy offered me 100 bucks, they can have it. You know what I mean? I really don't want it at all. Um, so we'll probably try to take care, this week, we'll try to take care of those two uh, outstanding lawnmowers, the Allen Craftsman self-propelled green uh, push mower that self-propelled, needs a cable, fix the pull rope, that ought to be okay. I mean, I, I have to search around for some wires, some cables, see if it works. 
And then, of course, I, I have a feeling that that Toro is going to take a couple of episodes to do. It, uh, I'm going to try to do it without buying anything. <laughs> I'm going to try to do it without buying any cables. Uh, I want to try to jig cables. I've got other cables, but they may not be long enough, may not be the exact same, but I could try to figure out how to get it to work. But uh, thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Mr. Tecumseh here, and we'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video, and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.